Good evening, High Point family. My name is Sasha Benson Kramer, and I greet you on behalf of our dear pastors, Apostle Thomas H. Benson and Dr. Curlin Benson. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. If you're watching via social media, please hit your share buttons and invite someone to watch along with you. We hope you're ready to hear a great word from the Lord on tonight. Let's get our Bibles and let's get our note-taking materials and get into the word with our very own and my baby sister, Minister Shelly Vincent Bullock. Praise the Lord, High Point family. Shelly Vincent Bullock here, and I'm so happy to be here with you all tonight to share the word of the Lord with you on tonight. So make sure that you have your Bibles and your notepads because um, we are going to be um, just giving you just a few remarks that the Lord, um, just some things that the Lord shared with me. I'm going to share it with you all tonight, but I definitely want you guys to have your your pens and your pads so you can write some of these things down. I give honor to God tonight. He is truly everything. He's everything. He's everything. And I give him praise, glory, and honor um, just for allowing me to even be here to share with you all. I honor God. I honor my parents um, and my pastors, Dr. Apostle Thomas H. Vinson. Dr. Carolyn Vinson, I appreciate them so, so much. And I'm so happy to be celebrating 37 years with them. They have been in ministry full-time 37 years. And I give God praise, honor, and glory for the gift that they are to the body of Christ and to the world at large. I just, whew, they're wonderful people. Um, I give honor to my sisters and the first family, my brothers, my nieces and nephews. I honor God for all of you. I honor my husband tonight, Deshaun Bullock. I honor him and I honor my kids tonight. I praise God for them. Um, I honor all the elders, ministers, deacons, and the whole entire High Point family. I honor you tonight and I love and appreciate all of you. Uh, we are going to go quickly to the word of the Lord. I'm not going to be um, here long, but I just want to share some things with you um, that the Lord shared with me. Um, here lately, I have been wrestling within myself um, on a lot of different things. The Lord has been sharing things with me. And I think um, the things that he's sharing with me um, it's not always pleasant all the time, but tonight God wants me to sound an alarm and God wants me to sound an alarm for his people because he wants us to wake up. His coming is very soon and he wants us to wake up. So tonight I'm here as a watchman to sound the alarm and to let you all know um, that the Lord is coming soon. And I just wanna share some things that he gave me um, to tell you all before I go into um, the formal part of um, the word that he gave me. I just wanna share a couple of things with you that the Lord um, spoke to me during my prayer time he said, gird up your loins. I send a great shaking on the earth. Only those rooted in me will stand. Those that have compromised will not stand. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning bright. Don't be deceived. Don't be moved. Don't be shaken. Be rooted in me and in my word. I send warning. I send warning. Pray, pray, pray and seek my face. Cover your families, cover your children. 
Renounce the idols that you have worshipped. Renounce the media that you have taken in. Cleanse yourselves. Arm yourselves with my word. If my people who are called by my name will pray and cry unto me, surely I will hear and surely I will turn. My wrath is falling on those that do not believe. Purify yourselves, my people. Remain set apart. Time is running out. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning for behold, the bridegroom cometh. I am even at the door. Hearken unto me this day. I will do great miracles among my people. Do not worry. Take no thought for what ye shall eat, drink, or wear. I, the Lord, shall provide for thee. I, the Lord, will honor my word to thee. I have spoken it, and it shall be so. There will be an awakening in the young people says the Lord. The prophetic will be released among them and they shall sing and speak what saith the Lord. I am raising up an army, saith God, a mighty army of soldiers that will obey my command, a bold army. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. Arm yourselves. Be not ignorant of Satan's devices. Open your eyes and see. Open your ears and hear. Look and hear in the spirit. Discern. Don't slow down now. Don't get weary. A new work has begun and I, the Lord, will energize you. I, the Lord, will keep you. My, pro my promise is sure. My word is true. Look to me. Don't slow down. Run, run to the finish. He gave me that some weeks ago and I sent it to my parents and then God woke me up again. He's been waking me up uh, between the hours of three and six in the morning. And I love my sleep, saints and friends. I love to sleep, but God has been waking me up and showing me things and giving me things to say and to warn the people about. And some days I did not get up because I was like, Lord, I know I'm not going to be able to take a nap. I got the kids. I'm going to be ripping and running all day. And God still spoke to me even throughout the day. But he keeps waking me up. And last night he woke me up. I woke up to the sound of a news anchor. And it was almost like the TV was on in my room, but it was a news anchor. And the headlines were millions lose money in banks. The stock market was tanking or crashing. There was news of a major plane crash. There was news of murder. And the Lord spoke to me, money, murder, mayhem. Men's hearts will fail them for fear. The Lord said, I'm not slack concerning my promise. My return is very soon. Seek me while I am near. Call upon me. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. If he turns to me, I will abundantly pardon. True repentance and turning away. No more will I wink. I will execute judgment. Turn and hear me. Obey my voice. Hearken unto me. Listen. I send warning. I send warning. Where are the watchmen on the wall? Intercession, prayer wall. Watchmen stay on the wall. Get up and meet the Lord to pray. The fourth watch. And what I learned is that the fourth watch is between the hours of 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. And I started to read more about the watchmen. And just a few days ago in our minister's class, the watchman was actually talked about, the watchman on the wall. And God is calling 
us back to being watchmen, those who are supposed to be watching. He's dealing with some in the prophetic. There are some that are supposed to intercede and pray on the wall. There are some that God is showing things and giving prophetic visions and prophetic insight to what you're seeing. And God wants us to stay on the wall especially between the hours of 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., the fourth watch. But I saw millions losing money in banks. I saw a horrible plane crash, and there was a father in my dream or the vision that God gave me that murdered his entire household. I saw chaos on the streets. Um, people were running. They were screaming in fear. Um, it was some type of event or arena it, people were at, but people were just running and screaming. There's going to be a great shift in the earth. And things will be much different than they were before. It's coming. But life as we know it is going to be different than it was before. Then I saw a white horse with a golden sword. And I heard the Lord say loudly, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. Make ready, make ready. So I just wanted to share the word of the Lord with you all tonight and tell you that God is not slack concerning his promise. He's coming. And things on this earth are going to continue to get worse and worse. So he's sounding the alarm and telling us to wake up. We've got to wake up and we've got to get back on our post. We have to get back to our assignments. And what he gave me was be not conformed to this world. So if there's a thought for tonight, it's be not conformed to this world. Don't let the truth of the word of God be pushed out or flushed out of you. And he took me to Romans 12, 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Um, the scripture is very familiar. I appeal to you. I'm reading in the Amplified. I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, this age age fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs but be transformed changed by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideals and its new attitude so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. God is sending a warning tonight to all of those who will hear his voice. Hearken unto him. He does not want us to be consumed by the things of the world and take on worldly characteristics. God is calling us to renew our minds. We must be transformed in our way of thinking. We must continuously remember to only do the things that are good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for us. We must walk in the spirit, continually in the spirit. Galatians 5.16 but I say walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh of human nature without God. We have to stay away from popular trends and world views. We've started to consume too much media, too much of the popular trends. We're trying to do what everybody else is doing. Do not accept the world's standards. 
God's standard and law supersedes the standards and laws of society or the world. Just because society says that it's okay does not mean that it's okay. We can't go along with the crowd. We've got to be set apart, set apart. We can still love people and not agree with their practices. Love people enough to tell them the truth. They will either accept it or they will deny it. But even if they deny it, you can still love them and treat them with love. But we can love people and still tell them the truth. We can love people and not agree with their practices. Remember that God's word has all authority. It's not to be diluted. It's not to be changed. It's not to be messed with. God's word has all authority. That which he speaks has power and rules over everything. That which he speaks has power and rules over everything. God's word is life. It's the only thing that's going to stand. Matthew 24, 35 says, sky and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. The only thing that's going to stand is the word of God. All of these world views and politics and popular trends and TikTok and Instagram, all these things are going to fade away. But God's word is going to stand. So we've got to listen to God and to his voice alone. We've got to get well acquainted with his voice. How does God sound? What am I? Shanda Yadabosaya. Woo! God wants us to know him. He wants us to know his voice so that we're clear when he is speaking. He cannot contradict his word. So make sure that you use discernment, people of God, because every voice is not God. Matthew 4 and 1. Let's go there. I hope you're writing down all these scriptures. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm moving along pretty quickly. But Matthew 4 and 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. The spirit of the Antichrist is here. So you have to be careful who you are listening to. God said, know him, know his voice, know how he sounds, get well acquainted. How do we get well acquainted? We must spend time. God said more time, more time. We must spend more time with him so that we are well acquainted with his voice, with his presence. Hallelujah. If you are listening to someone and they are preaching a false gospel, turn it off and tune it out. Amen. Turn it off and tune it out. We preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. He rose on the third day with all power in his hands. Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. Any other gospel besides Jesus? There are so many 
um, lanes that people are trying to go in and and sell us different ideals of Christianity and all of these things, but many of them are false gospels. They're not even Christ-centered. So we have to be very careful what we are giving ear to. Again, we cannot dilute, we cannot add, we cannot take away from the word of God to fit our lifestyle or our narrative. Watch out for people that are doing these things. They will twist what God is saying. They will twist the word of God. They will use certain scriptures and leave out others, but they'll twist <laughs> what God is saying to fit their narrative. God is warning us, look out for these things. In Deuteronomy 12, 32, God said to them, whatever I command you, be watchful to do it. You shall not add to it or diminish it. Then again in Revelations 22, 18 through 19, for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So God is warning us. His word is his word. That which he speaks and that which is written. Don't twist what he says to fit your narrative or to try to justify your lifestyle. We have to be wise and we have to be watchful and we have to stay away from those who try to twist God's words um, to benefit their agendas. We have to wake up and we have to see what's going on. We have to use discernment. Amen. What the Bible says is sin is sin. Plain and simple. And we've got to be bold enough to call it out, to stay away from it. We've got to avoid the very appearance of evil. We've got to be set apart. And many people are having the argument, well, what is sin? Is this a sin? Is that a sin? Well, it doesn't say that exactly in the Bible. And technically, that's not in the Bible. And technically, this is not in the Bible. James 14, 17. James 14, 17 says, so any person who knows what is right to do, but does not do it, to him it is sin. 1 John 3 and 4, everyone who commits, practices sin is guilty of lawlessness for that is what sin is. It's lawlessness, the breaking, violating of God's law by transgression or neglect, being unrestrained and unregulated by his commands and his will. So whenever we know the right thing to do, but we still don't do it, that's sin. Sin is lawlessness. We know what God's commands are in our lives. We know what God's will is for our lives, but we don't wanna be confined. We don't wanna be restrained. So we buck up against what God is saying and we wanna do it our way. We want to walk our own path. We want to live our truth. God wants to us to come out of sin and call it like it is. When you see it, call it out. Call out sin and stop accepting it and pacifying it. God wants us to call it out and don't participate in it. Even if it's your friend, your best friend, your good buddy, 
if what they're doing is sinful, if you know that they're deliberately disobeying the will of God for their life and you're out with them participating, you at the party, you dancing with them, you drinking with them, God said we've got to be set apart and we cannot condone or participate in sin. We have to also stop trying to justify and give reasons for pleasing our flesh. We have to stop doing it. If you are neglecting to follow God's commands and God's will for your life, you're in sin. And many are trying to justify their walk. They're trying to justify why they're doing what they're doing. They're trying to argue over semantics and technicalities. And they're trying to argue on whether God really said what he said. Or, well, is that really in the Bible? Or is God really saying that? But God's word is very clear, saints of God. God's word is very clear, but we refuse to hear. We turn a deaf ear deliberately because we don't want to discipline ourselves. We don't want to bring our flesh under subjection. We don't want to be confined. We don't want to be restrained. And many people say, well, I've been saved for years. Haven't I sacrificed enough? And, you know, well, this is not the worst uh, thing I could be doing. I could be, you know, doing this. Well, this is not really that big of a deal compared to what some other people are doing. You know, this is not. This is not that bad compared to what they over there doing. But it's those little things that we're letting in. It's those little things that we're holding on to that's causing us to miss God. Why are we holding these things in our hands? God wants us to let these things go. We've got to let go of all the worldly standards and the worldly things that we've taken on. Why are we trying to walk a line? We're trying to walk the line. God said, stop trying to walk the line. Stop arguing over stuff that you know you're not supposed to be doing. And that's really what it is. We want to do it so bad, so we have to try to find ways to make it fit into a holy lifestyle. And it doesn't fit. So we have to stop trying to make it fit. I've never seen so many people argue over whether we should celebrate Halloween, you know. And... You know, people argue about, oh, well, my child is a good ghost and my child is a good witch. <laughs> people of God, we've got to do better. I've seen people arguing over uh, whether the people of God should speak in tongues. I've seen people arguing over not this is a sin and that is a sin. Well, the shacking up is not technically in the Bible and this is not technically in the Bible and the Bible don't say nothing about, you know, medicinal weed. And, you know, there's just so many little isms and schisms and all these things. But I'm telling people to really ask God, really seek God. He's going to tell you what his will is for your life. If you earnestly ask, he's going to enlighten you and give you revelation to the truth of what he wants for you. Amen. But we can't keep arguing and trying to find ways to justify things that we're doing to please our flesh. 
because God's word is very clear. There are examples of so many things in the Bible. And just because a technical word that you're looking for is not necessarily in the Bible, doesn't mean that God wants you to participate in that. Because I'm sure if you look, God's going to reveal to you something that's in his word that tackles that exact topic. He's going to reveal the truth. But that's if we really even want to know. Amen. That's if we really want to know. Because according to world standards, ignorance is bliss. Right? Because basically, if you don't earnestly ask, you know, you may be scared of what the answer is going to be because God's answer may not be pleasing to your flesh. It may not feel good to your flesh. So you avoid asking. So you won't have the knowledge, you won't have the wisdom, and you won't be held accountable for it. So you don't ask. But the Lord says, ask, seek, knock sincerely ask seek and knock and he will open up your understanding he has given us his spirit the holy ghost which will lead and guide us into all truth you can find that in john 16 13 but holiness is the standard it's the standard of god holiness is the standard so we must stop taking on the views of the world we must stop absorbing the things of the world and we must start displaying the fruit of the spirit we must start using self-control And the last thing that God gave me was don't be weary in well-doing. Promotion comes from God. Psalms 75, 6 through 7. It says, For promotion cometh neither from the east nor the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. So saints and friends, please do not try to manufacture a blessing or help God out because world standards say, I can make it happen. I'm going to make it happen myself. And there's a new manifesting. I can manifest the future that I want. I can create the life that I want to have. I can take shortcuts and get there i can do this i can go through the back door and get this i can do this and i can be with this person and i can work my way up the ladder that way i can take these classes online and i can i'm gonna be an elder and get my elder certificate oh i'm gonna take these classes online and get my minister's license and i can perform weddings for whoever i want i can take these class i can become a pastor online I don't need anyone to ordain me. But titles mean nothing if God has not graced you for it. If God did not call you to that or promote you to that, leave it alone. Because you do not have the grace that's required to perform that task. So wait on the Lord and let him exalt you. Wait on the Lord. Do not let people put you in a place where you should not be. This is very dangerous to get ahead of God's timing and to try to bend his will to fit your wants. And that's what God was dealing with me heavily about is trying to bend his will. He's not going to bend. God says what he says. He means what he says. His word is sure. 
God has us right where he wants us to be. So please stay where you are. Continue to do good. Continue to serve. Continue to love. Don't try to promote yourselves ahead of God's timing. The ministry of God is sacred. The things of God are sacred and they are not to be mishandled. Amen. And I was talking to my parents uh, the other day and I've been reading about, you know, the Ark of the Covenant and when it finally made its way, it went through a lot of things. When it finally made its way back to, you can find the, the reading in Samuel. But when it finally made its way back to um, where it was supposed to be with the children of Israel, instead of allowing the, the Levites to carry it properly the way they were supposed to carry it, they put it on a cart, which they were not supposed to do. And along the journey... The cart became unsteady and the Ark of the Covenant started to slip. And Uzzah put his hand out to catch the cart, to catch the Ark of the Covenant. And because he touched it, he died. He had the right intentions. What he was doing seemed right. It seemed right. Hey, let me catch it. I don't want it to fall but he died because he disobeyed the command of the Lord. God's commands are clear. His word is sure. He said he's not winking anymore, but he's going to execute judgment because he means what he says. And he does not want us to mishandle the things of God because they are sacred. And some people may want to help people. They may have the right intentions. But if that's not what God called you to do, you stepping outside of the will of God. You're disobeying his command. So I hope that you guys heed the warnings of the Lord tonight. This was not a very, you know, I struggled with it because I was like, Lord, this is, you know, I want to say something happy. You know, this is my my first time speaking since I've been back. And I, I wanted to say something happy, you know, but this is the assignment that God has given me. And I take it very seriously. And I am completely humbled. God saved my life for me to be here today to say this to you all, to sound the alarm, to sound the warning. His coming is soon. And he's coming for a beautiful bride. And he's trying to make us ready. So please heed the warnings of the Lord tonight. Be not conformed to this world, but let's be transformed by the renewing of our minds. If there are things in your life that you know you've been holding on to, that you need to let go of, renounce those things tonight. Renounce your idols, everything that you've put in front of God, whether it be television, whether it be social media, whether it be hanging out with your friends, whether it be spending your tithes and offerings instead of giving it, whatever you're putting before God, your job, chasing after money, chasing after things, renounce your idols tonight those secret things that you do that nobody even knows about. God sees. And he wants us to put away those things. Holiness is the standard. 
It's still the standard. It will be the standard. God is not going to tolerate sin in his presence. We've got to be clean and we've got to be right. And we've got to prepare ourselves for who God is sending in. We've got to be right so that we can receive others and minister to them. So God is calling his church to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. The bridegroom is coming. Wake up. The bridegroom is coming. Wake up. Wake up. The bridegroom is coming. Are you prepared to meet him tonight? Are you prepared? Whatever is in your way, get rid of it. Get rid of it. And we know what these things are. And God is calling us to get rid of these things. And get back in our places. Get back on our posts. Get back where we're supposed to be. Pray like never before. Read God's word. Get acquainted with God's voice. Do it now. Don't wait. Don't wait. And all the watchmen who are supposed to be on the wall, get on the wall, get on the wall, get on the wall. Get on the wall. Get on the wall. We have a major job to do. Get on the wall and watch. Hey man. And all of you who are in ministry on ministry teams, continue to stay close. When mom and dad are speaking, stay close. Undergird them with prayer. Intercede. Intercede for those who are going to be coming in. Be ready to help. Be ready to assist. Be ready to minister on your jobs. Be ready to minister at your schools. Wherever you are, be available. Be available to serve. Amen. I love you all tonight. God loves all of you. And I hope that you receive what the Lord is saying on tonight. God bless you. I love you so much. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Minister Shelley, for that great word from the Lord on tonight. We hope that you all enjoyed Bible study on this evening. Now we're asking that you get ready to give. If you're giving online, you can visit our website, www.highpointlive.org. Scroll down to the bottom of the page and click the donation tab. If you're giving by mail, you can send your tithes and offerings to High Point Christian Tabernacle, P.O. Box 813-699, Smyrna, Georgia 30081. Now we want to invite you all out to our Sunday services at 11 a.m. Remember, you don't have to register anymore, but we are asking everyone to please wear their mask. And this Sunday, we want to pack the place out, y'all. We are celebrating. Yes, we are celebrating our beautiful pastor's 37th anniversary of serving in the vineyard. We are so excited what God has done for our wonderful church high point. God has kept our ministry. God has kept our pastors and guided their footsteps along the way for 37 years, y'all. God is with us and God is so good. So come out and celebrate with us. And we're going to have a good time 
in the Lord. I just, I'm just so excited, y'all. Please remember all of those who are on our prayer list as well. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, High Point family. We look forward to seeing you on this Sunday. God bless y'all. High Point family, the time is here. We are ready for the 37th annual church and pastoral anniversary. We are so excited about coming out on Sunday, October 23rd to celebrate our wonderful leaders, Apostle Dr. Thomas H. Vinson and Dr. Carolyn Vinson. A $100 love gift has been asked of all members. Join us as we welcome our guest speaker for the hour, Bishop Daryl Bearer. We are so excited that he's coming to the point one more time. Join us in celebration in shades of purple. Yes, we will be wearing shades of purple. So come out to experience a mighty move of God and be ready to be blessed.